I'm Will Patterson, I'm a brand identity designer, and today I'm gonna to be critiquing and rating the logos you've seen throughout the amazingly successful TV series, Breaking Bad. For context, I'm a huge Breaking Bad fan, and as a designer, I couldn't help looking at the logos we see throughout the series and wondering more about the story behind them and if they would work in the real world. Whilst researching, I came across some mind-blowing facts that I had no idea about. So I hope you enjoyed this and learned some new things about this TV favorite. Stick around to the very end for a sneak peek at what series we'll be looking at next. Hello, and welcome to the Los Pollos Hermanos family. My name is Gustavo but you can call me Gus. The Los Polios Hermanos logo is iconic in its own right. It follows the same colors as McDonald's whilst also looking inherently Mexican. The design itself is one that anyone would assume is a fast food chain making this design so believable. The story behind the logo is even more interesting though. We know from the Breaking Bad story that the Chicken Brothers are supposed to be the owners, Gus Fring and Maximino Max. Akinyea, who died before the series began, leaving Gus to start the empire all by himself. Although the story of the Chicken Brothers is shown throughout the series as Gus and his co-founder Max, if you look closely at the design, you'll notice that the chicken on the right is wearing clothing that Walter White, Heisenberg would wear. Like a lot of logos, this could be a mere coincidence, an accidental meaning behind the story like Apple's logo, where some believe the bite of the apple to be from the story of Adam and Eve. Or this could just mean that Walter kind of became the new brother or took Max's place as the brother. Breaking Bad has a lot of mirroring within the series. Take Walt and Jesse, for example. Could the Chicken Brothers be made to mirror them instead of Gus? An even stranger part is how the logo was created. I'm not unfamiliar with the entire story, but what we do know is that the logo was designed by Mexican artist and designer, Humberto Puente Segura. Sorry if I said your name wrong. Which was sold to a subsidiary of Sony for $640.50. It looks like the logo was made for fun before the story of Breaking Bad was even a reality. Humberto later sued Sony for allegedly using the logo to sell merchandise without permission, allegedly. I'm not sure what happened with this as it was six years ago, but it's still very interesting nonetheless. So as a graphic designer, rating people's designs can be a bit difficult to do, especially when it's one that works so well. You can see the Los Polios Hermanos is yellow and red in its base colors, which is very indicative of most other fast food chains. Here are the key five things that we look for in good logos. Is it simple? Can you see it from a glance? In some ways you can see this logo from a glance just because of the Chicken Brothers. Obviously it's very cartoonish, which is good. It has a mascot, it's very friendly. Is it memorable? 100% yes, people remember the Los Polios logo even when they're just thinking about Breaking Bad. They've done a great job with that. Is it timeless? Well, you could say it is timeless, but it's gonna have some issues in the future probably because it is so detailed and it was the time before smartphones back then. A lot of companies now have actually modernized and rebranded and made their logos a lot simpler to be seen at smaller scales. Is it versatile? Not really. It can be seen at one scale, which is like big or massive, which again, it's fine. It can be seen on a drinks cup, like you can see throughout the whole series of Breaking Bad. You can tell it's Los Peleos Hermanos. And the last thing is whether it's appropriate. Yes, it is. It is 100% appropriate. It looks like a fast food chain in Mexico or New Mexico. So I'm going to give this design a four out of five. It's appropriate, versatile, and it's just iconic in its own right, but it's got a problem with scalability. If it was to work in the modern era, it would have to be a bit simpler. Don't hate me for saying that. <laughs> How do you not hate yourself? <laughs> this is it, guys. Our new home. All right. It's beautiful. Hooray. <laughs> you don't have to worry about uninvited guests when you call Vamanos Pest. The next logo we see is Vamanos Pest. They, like most businesses in the Breaking Bad universe, are a crooked fumigation company. Looking at the design, it has some of the same appropriation as Los Polios Hermanos, using a mascot insect as the main brand icon. We don't know who designed the Vamanos Pest logo. It's never been revealed online or anywhere I could find. However, we do know that the logo works well for the time Breaking Bad was set in. Let me know in the comments if you know who designed it. This logo isn't 
surface level. It goes deep into the story. What we know about the series is that whenever an insect shows up, we're directed towards that insect. There's a lot of symbolism throughout the entire series. When Jesse notices a beetle and doesn't harm it, he seems to like the beetle. Then Skinny Pete shows up and squashes it. This shows how Jesse wouldn't even harm a fly. We see this also when Walt is working. The whole episode is about a fly that Walt is so desperately trying to get rid of. Jesse didn't care about the fly, but Walt convinces Jesse that the fly is a contamination. Jesse then kills the fly on Walt's behalf. Just like Jesse did with Gale, both these characters at the start of the show wouldn't hurt a fly, but they've turned it into people who would stop at nothing to get what they want. Or should I say, Walt would stop at nothing to get what he wants. We can see Walt portraying himself as an abstract pest fumigator, getting rid of pests that infest his business. And although we're rooting for Walt, we also can see how Walt is a contamination to the society and the people around him. I personally like the Vamanos Pest logo. It works really well for the time period it was set in. It's got a mascot as well, which is that insect running away. It kind of makes a lot of sense in the whole scene of Breaking Bad, but not only that, the time period of the logo within 2008-2010, it's kind of like a throwback to the 1990s, this design, which is what I like. I'm guessing that the company was made in the 1990s in this Breaking Bad universe. Out of five, I would give it a four because it works well as a design. It's very uh, emotionally attached to the people who know it. You can instantly work out what they do, which is great. However, it, again, it's quite complicated, which isn't a bad thing for most logos. And from the design that I'm seeing here on my board, there's a lot of information in there. They could have made it a bit more concise throughout the stacking of Vaminost's pest fumigator, licensed and bonded, Albuquerque. There's a lot of information on there. The actual insect on the design works super well as well. I like it. So although the design works well throughout the series and it looks great, the actual pest is probably the best part of it. The rest of it is kind of like not what I would personally do. There's a few mistakes in there with the centering of the text and they could have made it, you know, probably a bit more like a, a round badge rather than just like, Kind of hit and miss everywhere the typography the font looks great the font choice is good let me know what you think down below this here is a new conception and we find it really prima half french dressing half ranch we call it simply French. The Madrigal Electromotive Company is one that is seen more towards the middle of the Breaking Bad series. The company is German and provides industrial air filtration and other things of that nature. We don't know who the logo is designed by, but what we do know is that it's a great fit for such a huge corporation. It's sleek, simple, and minimalistic in form. The design is similar to other business-to-business -business companies we see, having a more functional approach to the design rather than being based on a mascot like we see in most others throughout the Breaking Bad series. Series. Something you may not know is that Magical Electromotive is the parent company of Los Polios Hermanos, as seen in the small writing in the Los Polos TV commercial during one of the episodes. In the little village where I was born, life moved at a slower pace, yet felt all the richer for it. There, my two uncles were known far and wide for their delicious cooking. This design is just indicative of being a corporation. You see loads of corps, these huge companies that don't really sell to the everyday consumer, they sell to other businesses, just having this really basic design. So it's really hard to critique from a consumer point of view. But as a designer, the interesting part is that they've tracked the typography. By that, the spacing in between the letters is quite wide, which gives it a more cinematic feeling. This shows a sense of superiority. It shows a sense of all encompassing, a lot of space and freedom within this company. But on the other hand, corporate logos don't do very well with consumers uh, as we know, because we see the other logos in the series having like a chicken or like an insect. So I'm not gonna rate this one, but I think it works well for a big corporation like you would normally see. It's quite real. A company we hear a lot about but never actually see any branding for is Grey Matter Technologies. All we know is that Elliot, Walter's previous business partner and college roommate is now a billionaire, which Walt hates because it should have been him. Everywhere Grey Matter Technologies is shown, Elliot is there. The man Walter should have been. The path he should have taken to make this fortune. I think the reason we see no branding or visuals throughout the series for Grey Matter is that Elliot is now the face of Grey Matter. It's his face Walt sees on the TV and magazines and everything else. He is the brand with no trace of Walt left in the company. Similar to how I started, I didn't have a logo. It was just kind of my face. Almost forgot. Bugged out. 
as is. The next logo we see early and late into the series is A1A Car Wash. Long story short, Walt and Skyler buy the car wash and run it for themselves. The logo makes a lot of sense. It's round and more of a sticker. This form of design is great for car washes and similar businesses as people love stickers. Giving a sticker to a customer is a great way to advertise the A1A Car Wash. However, if you closely look at the design, the slogan reads, You've tried the rest, now try the best. To me, this corny slogan isn't just showing the car wash, it's also showing Walt's other product. The logo is Sky Blue, a name given to Walt's favorite product, which is known to be the best. This again shows the mirroring in the Breaking Bad series. Walt has a semi-legit business, which is advertised as the best, but also has an illegal empire, which is known to be the best. The sparkles we see on the logo could represent Walt and Skyler, washing the money, making it squeaky clean by physically washing cars, which is a stellar symbolism. The A1A car wash logo is just what it is. It's very basic. It doesn't actually say A1A very clearly. It just says car wash, but this might not matter too much for small businesses like them. We do know that they're gonna franchise or they want to franchise in the series. The design itself functionally is great because the way that people love to advertise these things would be through stickers, giving them for free to customers, kind of like what Apple do whenever you buy a new iPhone, you get like an Apple sticker that you can shove on your window or wherever you want. People love free things, so why not give them a sticker? For the actual design of the logo, I'll give it a three because although it's functional and works, it doesn't say A1A, so the brand recognition isn't there. Would it work in real life? Probably. I've seen worse ones in real life for car washes, but it's interesting nonetheless. The next logo we see is from a company called Golden Moth Chemical. This logo is the B you see on all the barrels in the lab at Magical's warehouse. Although the company is called Golden Moth, the character in the logo is this, which is Chinese for bee, wasp, or hornet. Moth is this character. What I love about TV series logos and movie logos is the Easter eggs throughout, like those serial numbers on the barrels. 00892-B can be read as a hexadecimal RGB code. Hash 00892-B is the signature Breaking Bad green color. Obviously, there's a clear link between wasps and hornets and danger. And we know the significance of insects within the series too. The Golden Moth Chemical logo is probably the best logo in the series. It's very corporate. It's very distinctive and unique as well. Although it doesn't speak much about chemicals, I can't fault them because they might have other things. It just makes a lot of sense to have a logo that's very geometrically placed on a barrel. It kind of, to me, looks like a chemical symbol of some sort. But yeah, this one gets a five out of five because it really is scalable, appropriate, memorable, versatile, and timeless. It does all the things that you can think of for a good logo. So Breaking Bad is full of Easter eggs. Take the last episode, for instance. Felina. Felina is an anagram for finale and is also the feminine version of the word feline in Italian, Portuguese, and Spanish. Felina is a portmanteau of F-E, L-I, and N-A. Those are the symbols for iron, lithium, and sodium, or shorthand for blood, myrrh, and tears. Can't say the actual word for it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new. If I've missed any core cool facts, let me know in the comments below. For the next episode of the series, I'm going to be looking into better call sort. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that episode. Goodbye.